Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Hector Bones, Dan Crafton, Tim Ashman, and everybody. Welcome our brand new patron, Maku. Yay, Maku. On this episode of DTNS, Google gives Workspace subscribers Gemini. Duolingo is adding its own AI as well. And why you don't need to worry about Ford listening to your conversations. Yet. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, September 24th, 2024. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. From Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Che. You know, September 24th, 2024 has a nice little numerical parody to it. It makes me wonder, Sarah, did we celebrate February 4th this way? Because... Two four twenty twenty four. 2024. I know I you like these kinds of things. So. I, I, I'm palindromes um, and, uh, yes, things that are in a pattern. Uh, very important to me. I don't remember February. <laughs> I don't either. Did That's it a long time ago. Are we but... sure there was a February? <laughs> right. But, yes, 9-24-2024. This is a good one. This There's is a, a good one. Thing. It's a good yeah. omen. Yeah, it is a good omen. I think it means we should start with the quick hits today. Let's do it. Google is updating its video editor in the Photos app, both for Android and iOS. A speed tool can create slow-mo or speed up videos faster. Audio Enhance improves color and stability in the trimming tool, and the trimming tool should be a little more precise. Also, the UI is being rearranged below the timeline in the editor. So if you want to do a mute, enhance, stabilize, and export frames, they're all up there up front. There's also a handful of new presets for one-touch effects for dynamic motion tracking, lightning, adjustment, and others. Logitech launched the first product since it acquired Steam Deck Stream Deck competitor. Important difference to get that R in there. Stream Deck competitor Loop Deck last year. The MX Creative Console has a nine-key programmable keypad, as you might expect, along with a dial with four buttons and a scroll wheel. Uh, It's designed to work with Photoshop or Premiere Pro specifically, so there's easy ways in there to make shortcuts for both of those programs and the dial works really well with some of the features that adobe has these days connects by USB-C for the keypad bluetooth for the dial pad if you uh want to use logitech's rf you can do that but you have to buy the dongle separately also comes with three months of adobe creative cloud and you can order it all right now for 200 bucks shipping october 14th Roku launched the 2024 Roku Ultra with 30% faster performance thanks to a quad-core processor. It includes Dolby Atmos Audio and Dolby Vision for 4K and HDR10 Plus picture quality. You can connect it by Wi-Fi 6 uh, or Ethernet. The new Voice Remote Pro, which is the second edition, charges by USB-C and has backlit buttons and a new quick launch button that gives you a screen of your most used apps and voice commands. There's also Roku OS 14, which comes to other Roku devices as well. It's available now for $100, same price as the new Google TV streamer. All right, so we got drama in WordPress land. Uh, yesterday, we mentioned that Matt Mullenweg got up on stage at Word uh, at the Word conference and uh, also followed up online, telling folks they'd be better off choosing a company that isn't WP Engine. Uh, WP Engine now says it has sent a cease and desist to Mullenweg to get him to stop making, quote, harmful and disparaging statements against the company. Uh, the company also claimed Mullenweg demanded a large sum of money Uh, before he gave that WordCamp speech and then threatened if they didn't pay, he would engage in a, quote, self-described scorched earth nuclear approach toward WP Engine. The money was allegedly for the use of the WordPress trademark, (sighs) which WP Engine says it's using under fair use. So that seems to be what this is all about. Spotify is expanding the regions that it can use text and describe a playlist and have Spotify's algorithms create one for them with 30 songs. So you can even provide follow on prompts to fine tune something like, uh, you know, what what you wanted to to get the the next uh, the next song. 
in people in Australia and the UK already had this. It's now available to people in Canada, Ireland, New Zealand, and the US. You do need a paid subscription to access it. This just in, Sarah. February 4th was a Sunday, so we didn't get to celebrate it on DTNS. Um, yeah. Thank you, um, whoever in the chat pointed that yeah, out. Yeah. Which it is yeah. now it is now scrolled past, so I a forget. A sad, sad palindrome that, that has passed our death. It was a palindrome day of rest, February 4th. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, Today is not a day of rest, though. Google announced that the Gemini chatbot is coming to the people who pay for workspace business. Uh, that also includes workspace enterprise and frontline plans. Uh, starting sometime after October 1st. So you won't see it today, but uh, you won't have to go get it separately. It'll just be part of workspace. Smart move on Google's part, if you ask me, because it means they will get more people using Gemini. And it seems like they're moving into, we need more people to be aware that Gemini exists and can do things versus versus making all the money in the world off of it. Under workspace terms, Google does not use company data to train the model uh, or otherwise improve the Gemini models. Admins can control how or whether Gemini stores your prompts at all uh, on an individual basis. If you're in the industry, you might want to know that it is both SOC123 and ISO227701. Maybe it doesn't mean anything to most people, but you know that's security and privacy standards that folks in the industry often look for. Google's also rolling out a security advisor tool that will send info to an admin's inbox uh, to let them know what's going on, uh, including, including browsing and data protection for Chrome, Gmail, and Google Drive. Now, that's interesting, and we're going to talk about that. But in somewhat related news, Warner Brothers Discovery is using Google's Vertex development platform to generate captions automatically for video on the Max streaming service. If it's a scripted video, they don't need this as much because you have the script that you can go on and the, just tweak that to be the captions. But for reality shows, unscripted shows, they're going to be using this. They say it generates captions 80% faster than the old way, uh, which is doing it by hand. And uh, Google said it's partnering with Snap to power a lot of the models in Snapchat. So you've you've got Google out there saying, hey, we, we have partners too, OpenAI. Uh, I don't know, Sarah, it feels like Google's on a little bit of a charm offensive here. Like, here, have a little Gemini. And we're partners, you know, with Warner Brothers Discovery, the the makers of Game of Thrones. Like, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. Look yeah, at whatever guy. that means. But um, no, I think, I think the Gemini... Um, the the charm offensive is is a good way to describe this uh the, google has been accused or you know whatever you want to say of of just being slightly behind open ai in everything you know like google should have been you know they yeah. should have been you know the it's first horse out of the gate yeah um a lot of horses going on on the show today um pre-show uh during the show and also post-show but but um, but I I I think that this is really smart, I, and I think that this is not unlike what Apple's doing. We're going to bundle AI stuff into products that you already use. You know, we, you have uh, you know, if Sarah gets up in the morning and you know opens up Google Docs and has some sort of a process. This will help her in some way. I don't know if it's going to help me. You know, I, I don't know. Um, I don't actually use Gemini all that much. Besides, there you go. That, bes this is the solution, right? <laughs> bes well, besides, look, you know, when I search for things, which is several times a day, um, you know, I've got my uh, my Gemini uh, results up top, of uh, which I either, you know, look at or don't. Um, but But yeah, it's like, how can, you know, Google, who has such a robust... Yeah, you know, um, workplace atmosphere. You know, we use Google Docs exclusively. Well, you know, mostly Quite on on, yeah. on our show. And you know, what? How does how does that help our process? I don't know the answer to that yet. I don't think that AI really helps my process in 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 general at all. But I'm still looking for that moment where I'm like, aha, okay, got it. There definitely have been times where I'm in a Google Doc, uh, and because we don't have Gemini, uh, we're not paying extra for it, uh, I've wanted 
to consult it. I've been like, hey, can you can you grammar check this? I, I have the Grammarly plugin now, which works the same way. But before that, I was like, I, I want Gemini uh, to do this. Or can Gemini summarize this? Could I get Gemini, Gemini to tweak these, these sheets cells? Uh, some of those things I want it to do, it won't do. It's not capable of doing, but I don't know what it is and isn't capable. And I think that makes a big difference. And that's why this is smart, is Google saying, let's, let's just give that to the paying users. Let's, let's not hold it back as a separate thing that they have to pay extra for because not enough of them are paying extra for it because they don't know what it's good for. Let's stick it in front of people so you get them using it and sharing with each other. You know, I really didn't know what it was good for, but I found that I'm using it for this. And then that spreads. You get more people talking about it. You get more people using it. And then maybe you can make it its own tier. Yeah. As far as uh, the Vertex development platform generating uh, captions for a video where it wouldn't already be possible, that's interesting. I was, I don't know, I mean, I feel like we're in a world, <laughs> in a world, uh, where everything is captionable. You just, you know, it's like, it's like every platform has that as an option, you know, add it or don't type thing. Um, I'm not totally sure how this is going to help me on a daily basis, I guess for like a movie or a TV show where they just weren't uh, available otherwise. Yeah, well, they have to have them available, uh, but it speeds them up. If you're somebody yeah. who relies on them, right? You'll 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 theoretically get them faster. Maybe it brings them faster. It saves them money too, uh, so it lowers costs and and, and all of that. Um, and and it's it's fun for Google to say we're partnering with Warner Brothers Discovery, right? To to bring those captions to folks. And captions are extremely important uh, for a lot of different people uh, for a lot of different reasons. And also just really popular more more people than ever have captions on because it's loud or they don't like the way their tv sound is or, or whatever so you know this is, this is something warner brothers going to discovery is going to do anyway yeah. um but it, it makes it faster and, and makes it easier for them uh as part speaking of charm offensives uh a lot of people buzzing about CEO Sam Altman's blog post uh about the future of AI uh CEO of OpenAI, Sam Altman, in case you didn't know that for some reason. Uh, I read this post, Sarah, and I I thought it was very fine. Like, I didn't have a big problem with much or any of it, but it also, I didn't get buzzy about it. I'm not sure why people are saying Sam Altman talks about going into God mode. Uh, it was very overly positive. It didn't talk about the negatives a lot, but that's, you know, what I would expect from the CEO of OpenAI. So it didn't set me back on my rear about like, wow, the future of AI, uh, nor did it make me upset. Uh, the, the biggest thing he said is that we will have super intelligence in a few thousand days. It may take longer. Uh, that's a pretty safe prediction. Uh, it'll be either <laughs> eight years or possibly longer. I'm yeah. like, yes, yeah. that that's that seems true. Yeah, I'm I'm sort of like, uh, oh, not six months. All right, well, let's talk about it when we get there. Yeah, in eight um, years from now. So you know, you can go read it if you want. It's pretty short uh, and and extremely positive. But maybe you know you're you're wanting to get into AI and you want want to know what the positive people think. Uh, it's it's a decent look at the optimist view of yeah. that. Speaking of AI, though, we got some going into our language apps now too. Yeah, we do. So at DuoCon 2024, yes, this is a real thing. Duolingo introduced two new features for language learning. One is adventures and one is AI video calls. So adventures is a gamified experience that lets you as a user apply your language skills in real world situations. Like what would you do if you were ordering at a restaurant and the Duolingo characters, Lily and Oscar are going to help you along the way. So it feels a little bit more real world scenario. For now, it's available for English speakers learning French and Spanish speakers learning English. So <laughs> I happen to be an English speaker learning French, so this applies to me. Uh, might not apply to everybody, though. AI video calls simulate conversational practices with the Duolingo characters, Lily. Uh, Lily. Uh, she's the only one. De designed to help you as a user build confidence while you're speaking. It's iOS only for now. You have to be a subscriber to Duolingo Max 
Duolingo also announced a collaboration with Lug, that's L-O-O-G, to release an electric piano for their upcoming music course. Yeah, Duolingo is, is go, going all out right now. Pre-orders for that electric piano open now are, are open now for $250 from the Duolingo store. Yeah, I think probably a lot of people didn't realize Duolingo did music lessons along with language lessons. So that that's kind of a good way to get the word out on that. And uh, people seem to like that that electric piano, from what I can tell. That's that's pretty cool. the The other thing requiring the Duolingo Max uh, subscription. I don't know that this is going to make anyone upgrade to the Max subscription over the Super uh, subscription, but maybe. I, I feel like the adventures is just what they already have stories, but you get to choose your own adventure, right? Like you're, you're walking yeah. around in the cafe instead of just following it on rails. So I guess that's kind of cool. Um, the AI video calls reminds me of something in another app I use called Memrise. Memrise has an AI chatbot that you can talk to and it will talk to you in the language you're studying. You can actually respond to it in that language or in your own language and then it will translate your responses, which is kind of helpful if you're like, I, I want to know how to say this, but I don't. Um, this mm -hmm. seems better though. This seems like it's really more tailored to your lesson. Whereas the memorized one is a little too open-ended for my taste. That's one of the issues with Duolingo that I have, even though I think that, you know, again, English speaker, learning French um, and, you know, practicing as much as I can, even though half the time the Duolingo bird is, you know, dying um, on my home screen. But um, but uh, it it it's helpful. You will learn stuff. You will be like, the man is opening the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know how to say that. You know, that kind of thing. And, you know, sometimes I feel like, gosh, this feels like I'm learning words. I am. You know, repetition is is part of the deal. But it's like, what what is the sentence? Like, why would I ever even say this? To have something that's a little bit more interactive I think is a really, really good idea for Duolingo or any other company that's trying to help people learn a language because you have to be, you know, you, you have to get, you, you, you have to be thrown a curveball. That's the way that you learn the language. If you're just sort of like, yes, I know how to say sit. I know how to say window. I know how yeah. to say door. I know how to say dog. It's like, yeah, but like, what happens when you talk to somebody, actually? And that's where I think Duolingo is going with this, uh, mm -hmm. with you know an AI friend of sorts that might say something to you or or Tom and might say something different to Roger or uh, you know or Joe. It's it's that's where I think the language learning will stick. Because There's otherwise, two... you know, you're only going to get so far. You're going to, it's like you're book smart, but you're not street smart. There's there's two ways you, you learn a language. Hearing, it uses a different part of your brain than speaking. Uh, and so if you're only learning by recognizing and hearing and reading, it makes it, you, you still might not be able to speak it. So I, I, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, forcing you to actually recall the words yourself. Uh, and not just see them and interpret them makes makes a big difference. Uh, it starting small with the you know the most popular languages on the platform English, Spanish, French. Uh, that it'll it'll come to Korean in six years, uh, and I'll enjoy it then. But you know it's it's got to start somewhere, right? I don't know. I mean, I think Korean is more popular <laughs> than you think. But you would think, but yeah. uh, but sadly, uh, that is not how. That's not, not where Duolingo. the features get prioritized on Duolingo. Yeah, uh, and I think Duolingo has said that you know French, French, English, and Spanish are its most popular languages. Which is if, funny because yeah, I uh, you know. I didn't even study French in school. I studied Spanish. I'm from California. I mean, that's all we do. <laughs> but uh, but 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 French is. I mean, it 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 is helpful. It really is. It's it's good to you know for retention and uh, I you know just sort of like keep your brain alive in that certain place that it might not be otherwise. But but yeah, the 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 um the path forward is. Probably to have an AI assistant. So that's where we're going. 
Yeah, these are beginning. Uh, I'm I'm not super impressed with the Duolingo one either. I think it's a little bit tighter than the Memorize one, uh, but they're all going to get better. They're all going to get fine tuned, and eventually, you know, my hope is they have ones that really can tell where you are in the language and push you just enough to learn and accelerate your your learning versus what happens a lot of times is it's kind of all over the place and you get discouraged because it's throwing some things that are too hard and some things that are too easy and and the the promise of these algorithms is that they will tailor this stuff uh and and help people learn languages faster and then eventually become universal translators and make it unnecessary to, to learn another language anyway because they can just speak for you at that point <laughs> yeah and yeah. just stick it in our ears uh if you have feedback about anything that gets brought up on the show uh, you could talk to us on the social networks out there. We are at DTNS show on X, uh, at DTNS show at mstdn.social on Mastodon, at Daily Tech News Show on TikTok, and DTNS Picks, DTNS PIX on Instagram and Threads. This one was lighting up our uh, subreddit today. In fact, I forgot to note down who posted it. Uh, I wanted to give them a little little special nod. Uh, it was uh, about Ford providing uh, a patent. Uh, now I can't find the, the person who posted it. I'll have to dig that up in a second. But Ford has filed a patent application for in-vehicle advertisements based on information derived from your driving behavior. As you might guess, they describe a method for using your route information, if you're using Ford's navigation, the speed you're driving, things like that, the the behavior of the car uh, to to customize things to you. I get that. It also says it could use audio signals and that the controller may monitor user dialogue to detect when individuals are in a conversation to decrease the number of ads. I like that. If I'm talking to somebody, don't don't interrupt me with a bunch of ads in, in the audio feed. But also, the conversations can be parsed for keywords or phrases that may indicate where the occupants are traveling to. Now, that could be used for good or ill. If they can tell where I'm traveling to and then provide navigation guidance, fine-tune that, maybe some points of interest along the way, that's great. If they're using that to feed ads, uh, I need to have a lot of control over that. The point being, this is a patent. People file patents all the time that they never implement because they just think they might someday and they want to make sure that they protect their ability to be first to market with that stuff. So this means that Ford wants to be the one who gets paid for doing this, uh, whether it's them or somebody else paying them to license their patent. It doesn't mean that it will do it. It doesn't even mean they can do it. You could patent a method without actually knowing exactly how you're going to properly implement it in the marketplace. Uh, if this becomes a product someday, I'm going to have a lot of uh, questions about it. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm going to know. I'm going to want to know how that data is processed, who it's shared with, is it stored in the car, is it short, shared in the cloud, what control do I have over it? Uh, but I will remind myself and everybody else that the patent filing is tantamount to saying I bet I could, not I'm going to, and certainly far from I have done it. So worth knowing about. But it's it's not something to panic about yet. Sarah, do you feel the same way? Um, I'm not panicking about it. I mean, so first of all, I I get into my my Volvo, um, which has CarPlay. Um, you know, I I it doesn't have wireless CarPlay because you know whatever 2019, and um, that is that is how my car experience happens. <laughs> Every time I get into my car. If there were ads, and we're talking like, we're talking ads beyond if I'm listening to a podcast, I might hear an ad that's part of the podcast. Like that's, that's something else entirely. If it's an ad that is part of the, the car itself, I better have paid less for that car. Or, you know, if I'm in a lease, I better be paying less for that lease. This is, this is to me, seems like very much a, you know, do you subscribe to YouTube premium? If you don't, okay, you'll get ads. You know, that's a, that's, that's your choice. You know, you, you decide what, what you care about more. Do you care about an ad free experience or, or would you like to save money when it comes to cars? Because cars are more and more a software based thing. 
Um, you know, even though there, there, a lot of hardware is still involved, but when it comes to the experience in the car, to get an ad, I would ha- like. Let's say I was buying a new car tomorrow, and that was something that. And again, I know this is all. You know, we're talking about patents, not anything that's going going into into place right now. But if I were to be given the option of like. Well, do you want to pay three hundred thirty-five dollars a month or four hundred dollars a month, ad or no ad type thing? I can see that happening. Yeah, I can absolutely. see that happening. This is also in the patent specifically on the human machine interface. So the drawings I'll show it just on the display. I know I mentioned audio there, uh, but that's not really what the patent is saying they intend to use it for. These are just display ads, so they may be less intrusive than you think. Uh, I think what sets people's hair on fire, though, is just the idea that Ford is going to do this. Uh, in fact, Moose in our chat room is like, I bet they have a prototype already, which they might. Uh, but yeah. but again, filing a patent uh, often appears to people to be intention. And it is if go look up all the Apple patents that have ever been filed and then count how many of those ended up in shipping products. It is a small percentage of them. So. I am not personally going to panic about this quite yet. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, reserve my, I'm going to save my panic. I've only got so much panic, Sarah, and I need to guard it it jealously. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 this does not, um, incite panic in, in me either. What I think is sort of panicky is, well, if, um, if something were to be a visual ad that you're designed to look at, you know, we all know how that goes. In a car, not a great idea. I mean, does that only happen when you turn the engine off or put it in park, you know, or otherwise the car knows that you're in such bad gridlock that like you can kind of look down and see the ad and, you know, not be unsafe. A lot of questions about how this would be delivered. You're thinking a video ad. Well, or a visual, anything yeah. that's visual. Because there's always audio. something visual on that machine interface, right? Yeah, but I mean, if I'm, if I'm, I don't know, if I'm going about my business and I've got a podcast playing, it doesn't, like, you know, I, I'm not looking at fireworks, you know, on that on that center screen. I, I'm just listening to things. If you listen to an ad and you hear it, I think that sticks more so in a car than maybe anywhere else. But if you if you have to see something that's either dangerous or you're not going to see it because you're not looking. All right. Uh, let us know what you think of these feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Speaking of which, we check out the mailbag now. Indeed. Greg had some thoughts about pausing video ads. This is what from our discussion in last Thursday's show. Greg says, I sometimes pause video in order to read the written dialogue or look more closely at a scene, such as when the movie zooms on some note that we're supposed to read. Advertisements are blocking the content that I want to see when I pause the video. Ah, yeah. So this is from Friday's conversation. Uh, and uh, I, I don't know... I haven't tried this with the ones that already do this, like Hulu. Uh, I think it doesn't kick in until several seconds have passed on Hulu because I've definitely paused on Hulu all the time and I don't see an ad immediately pop up. I don't know how YouTube is uh, is implementing it. So that's a that's a good one. And then a non-junior uh, responding to the conversation Nate and I had yesterday where, where Nate and I were comparing notes on being digital hoarders and the kind of uh, files that we keep forever. Uh, a non-junior said, hi, my name is a non-junior and I'm a data hoarder too. Hi, a non-junior. <laughs> Wave emoji. Uh, I have no idea what I'm actually going to do with all these past episodes of Games Revisited, especially since they're on YouTube and archive.org. So I think a lot of people can identify with that. Oh, and thanks to Motang. I looked it up. Motang was the one who submitted the Ford eavesdropping on passenger conversations. Thank you, Motang, for submitting that in our subreddit. Patrons, stick around for the extended show. Good day, Internet. Would you wear a pair of headphones to monitor your brain? We're going to talk about a new product you can pay for that will do just that. Just a reminder, we do this show live, and you can catch our show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern. That's 2000 UTC, and you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We're back doing it all again tomorrow, talking about the MetaConnect event 
with Scott Johnson joining us. Talk to you then. The DTNS family of podcasts, helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>